Hello, welcome to the video. Today's video, we're going to be exploring remakes. So what I'm going to do is I've picked out 11 top horror movies, which have equally as good remakes. So I'll be showing the original, talking about that a little bit, and then the remake of said film. So let's get started. And I thought I'd kick things off with a uh, heavy hitter indeed and lifting up this um, box is a um, bit of a workout in itself and that's um, 1978's Dawn of the Dead directed by George A. Romero awesome zombie movie great social commentary but equally has just as good a sequel um, the sequel's not better than the original I don't think I think the original's um, more nostalgic I think it's um, a slightly better made film with it being the original concept and idea however this remake really does stack up well. Wow. It's from 2004, directed by Zack Snyder. Um, some of the differences in the film are basically that this is glossier, it's more up to date, it's um, 26 years younger, this one being 26 years older. Um, the zombies are completely different in this one. It has the more traditional Night of the Living Dead Romero-esque um, slow zombies that will ultimately... Um, eat you alive as things progress in this movie we have fast moving zombies that resemble something more out of 28 days later so you've got slow zombies fast zombies um more characters in this one in the shopping mall there's a whole like gang of them littered around in this one it's a little bit more compact to a group of four so the films do have notable differences and the reason i picked all these movies in this list is because they have a fantastic base being that the original and they also have a remake which um like I say, um, could rival it slightly, you know, in some people's opinion. I normally go for the originals because I just have that nostalgia towards them and um, the classics, bona fide classics. However, the remakes are equally, you know, up there as well. Um, like I say, this one's more glossier, faster paced, um, doesn't have so much like commentary on the um, sort of like consumerism and like social aspects as this one does the original um, film but you know it's fast it's furious it's pretty damn good um zombies are a bit more like something like 28 days later though as i said um some other not noticeable um differences is is um in the remake of dawn of the dead you don't get so much comedy i mean there's a lot of comedic elements in the you know like the extended cut of dawn of the dead the original which i think is fantastic but in the remake Things are played a little more um, serious. And of course, they have different style of score. Of course, you've got Goblin's um, brilliant score for um, in um, Dawn of the Dead, as well as other music. And then in the remake, you've kind of got a lot of fast rock and things like that, especially on the um, ending sequence of the Dawn of the Dead remake. They um, use fast rock. You know, it's got very like, you know, you'll know if you've seen it. It's very um, heavy metal sort of-esque. Um, another film I picked out in this... Um, original and remakes video is maniac awesome sort of um exploration into the psyche of a killer you know the score with maniac scalps women puts the um scalps onto mannequins in the um complex he lives in and um, basically lays with them and sits there and talks to them he's having all kinds of crazy hallucinations starring joe spinell there's also a film called The Undertaker that's worth checking out. And then, of course, we have the remake. And I believe this is from 2012, starring Elijah Wood. Very good as well. Follows a lot of the same beats as Maniac. It's just a sort of more up-to-date, glossier, as I like to say, um, rendition of the story. But both equally as good. I prefer the original, of course, in this instance. But the remakes, the remakes, damn good. This is also from the killer's perspective more as it's POV. This one isn't. This one's POV. That's Maniac. On to another now. Bit of a heavy hitter here. And I've spoken about it a little bit with um, the summer just being gone. And um, it's been in a few videos. But um, that is 1980s Friday the 13th. The original, which actually doesn't have Jason in it. But then, of course, you have the... 2009 remake from the Platinum Dunes um, production company that also did the TCM remake among others but you've got the original no Jason 
he comes into it in part two there is a dream sequence that sort of features him but whether you count that or not that is entirely up to you and then of course we have the 2009 remake which um has just been released by our video fantastic edition on 4k you've got a lot of jason in this one almost like a best of or greatest hits of jason slashing you know from the original sort of like remade and whatnot with a new um, narrative and some new characters but of course you've got the classic the new one a lot of differences between these like i said jason being in this jason not being in that um the killer reveal this has more of a mystery to it and a killer reveal this one not so much it's just straight up slashing with jason Voorhees, getting rid of some um you know stacking up the body count getting rid of some bodies putting some people away um also in this one you have the it's set at the um camp so you have the camp counselors preparing for the opening of camp crystal lake in this one it's just a group of um young people going to um their friends um sort of condo cabin big cabin to have like a fun time over the um a summer but there you go there's both friday fair teams i would go with the original on this one which may be the case with all of them in here but i will sort of go into that a little bit further more as we get more polarizing choices um okay another one check the date on this one for you guys 1977's classic from west craven the hills have eyes and then of course you have the 2006 remake very interesting by french director alexandra arja who is also in cruel and um uh, high tension i think he did which is very brutal so you've got the classic, a lot going on as well, you know, sat in the desert, a family, they're stranded, um, their tyres have been punctured, um, and they're being picked up by mutant cannibalistic desert dwellers, as the same in this one, except this one has a bit more scope to it, a bit more to the story, it's a longer film by um, quite a bit, this one's 90 minutes, the original, and this um, remake is 103 minutes, so you're nearly given basically 30 minutes extra on this one. This has a bit of backstory into how the um, desert dwellers became mutated and, um, you know, how they're in that state and why they seek revenge on the sort of average person who um, steps into their domain. So there's a bit more backstory on the remake. Um, it's also glossier again. It's one of these glossy sort of movies. Um, just trying to see if I can find the studio. So it's from Fox Searchlight. I wondered if this was a Platinum Dunes, but it isn't. I don't think this one, The Hills Have Eyes remake. Very good though. A lot gory than the original. And they do go to some places that they don't in the original. I love the original. And I hold it in very high regard. Wes Craven, one of my favourite directors. However, I may go and say that the remake ups the game a little bit. Ups the ante. I'd probably go with the remake on this one. Both fantastic. I just think the remake has a bit more um, meat and potatoes to it, so to speak. Um, okay, on to another film now. We're getting down in this 11. There's 11 of them all together. Obviously, I've been through one, two, three, and four. We are on to the fifth now, and that is... Check the date for you guys again, because I like to get the date. 1981's classic from Sam Raimi, indie horror film, The Evil Dead. Full of great special effects, great gore, great narrative featuring the Necronomicon, which is opened and unleashes the Deadites, who possess um, Ash's friends, and he has to sort of take them out and um, try and get back to an um, equilibrium, which he had prior. And then, of course, you have 2013 Splatterfield Gorier remake. A lot gorier than the original, and the original is no slouch when it comes to gore. The original feed is basically the same storyline. They go to a cabin. Um, it's also produced by Sam Raimi, I think. Um, directed by Fede Alvarez, I think. Yeah, Fede Alvarez, who's just an alien Romulus. Brilliant film here. It's basically about a recovering drug addict. They take her to the cabin. Their friend, who's a drug addict, they want her to go cold turkey. So she comes off the drugs. This is nasty, especially that um, turkey knife scene. There's plenty more gore in this one and some horrific scenes. But the original classic is just more endearing and I prefer the effects and whatnot. But both are fantastic films. And if you've not seen them, I couldn't recommend them enough. I'll pick um, Evil Dead original for the um, winner out of those two. So going down the list a little bit, just a little fun video, thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm working on some different things. I'm going to try and um, present some videos a little bit differently, um, perhaps just how they're made and things you will see as we 
go further along. But I've picked out a black and white classic here from 1958, starring the legendary, you know, just amazing acts of Vincent Price. And that is The Fly. It tells the story of the flyer scientist trying to um, basically... Um, what he's trying to do, basically, I'm just trying to think because of different beats in the movie. But overall, the plot basically is about a teleportation machine. He's trying to sort of like, you know, like figure out how he can teleport humans from one place to another. Then, of course, we have the special effects brilliance of the 1986 David Cronenberg remake of The Fly, starring Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis. Fantastic film. The effects are much squelchier in this one. This is a classic and very good as well, like for a sort of like... Um, you know, subtle black and white movie. I think it's like a certificate 12. It's not um, over, you know, it's not gory or anything. It's just straight up good classic horror. This one, special effects filled masterpiece, just brilliant. We need it on 4K. This is the Screen Factory edition. Um, in this little battle, I'm going to go ahead and, sorry, Vincent, but Jeff Goldblum in the Fly 1986 takes it this time. This is bigger, um, more ambitious. The special effects are just to die for. Um, it's a David Cronenberg movie, so he focuses on the body horror elements as well to a very high standard. And I'm out of these two, I'm going to go remake. Okay, so a little bit early, but still, they're only a couple of months away from Santa Claus. And I've gone and picked out 1974's Canadian proto slasher Black Christmas, directed by Bob Clark. Also known for, um, what's he also known for? Children shouldn't play with dead things. And of course, the family favourite, A Christmas Story. And this is going up against, it's equally as good, I think, remake from 2006, Black Xmas, abbreviated. So they're both called Black Christmas. Let's forget that 2019 remake, because that is atrocious. I know that's a general um, sort of feeling on that film. And I also have that feeling on this film. But of course... You got this film here, very creepy, lot of tension, things build and build and build with the phone calls to the sorority girls. They're getting creepy phone calls. Some of them are left behind on, at Christmas time. Um, there's a killer on the loose. They're being picked off one by one. In this film, same narrative, except for you've just got a fresher group of um, girls with it being more modern as 2006. And you can notice those differences, one from the 70s, one from the 2000s. Aesthetically, it's very different. They're both set in their respective time periods. This one's big, bit bigger on scope with the story. They explore a little bit more into Billy the um, Killer's back origins. There's a twist, well, more of a twist in this one. And there's more to see. I love them both, though. And, um, yeah, they're both fantastic. This probably has more brutal kills. This has got some brilliant death scenes in it, too, as you can see on the cover. Um, I love them both, actually. And this is a staple now, the Black Christmas 2006 um, Christmas time, an absolute staple for me. I'm going to go with the OG on this one. A little bit more tension, a bit more atmosphere. It's a proto slasher responsible for sort of birthing films like Halloween and whatnot, or at least having influences in that area of the um, slasher genre. But this is no slouch either. 2006's Black Christmas. Great film. Let's forget about the 2019 one, but we'll go OG on that as well. Perhaps my favourite horror movie now. Well, it's one of them, if it isn't. And I had to put it in here on the OG versus remake. And that is 1974's The Turks' Chainsaw Massacre. Most people know this film. And of course, it has a fantastic 2003 remake from the Platinum Dunes production company. Need a 4K of this. They're both great. They both follow the same beats. They're set in the same time period of 1973, which is nice. One's a bit glossier and updated, which is the 2003, has a bigger budget. This was very low budget, but very iconic in its um, nature and how it was made and directed. You know, it's a very infamous movie. This is a good remake. They changed the names around. They're the Hewitts, the cannibal killer family in the original. They're, um, no, sorry, they're the <laughs> mistake there. They're the Sawyers in the original. They're the Hewitts in this one. So there's a notable change. You've got the Soys and the Hewitts. You've got the addition of the um, brother in this one. Instead of Nubbins, we have Sheriff Hoyt, played by Ali Ermey, who's a better character than Nubbins, I think. I think Sheriff Hoyt's more menacing. You know, he's got some great lines. Ali Ermey absolutely kills it in the role. Nubbins is fantastic in this one as the hitchhiker. That's how he's known. So the hitchhiker, Sheriff Hoyt, there's two noticeable differences. The family name changes. 
bit more to this one it's probably like 20 minutes longer as well the like explore things a little bit more there's some added scenes some fantastic scenes the kills are switched up they follow the same sort of beats but you've got different characters getting you know being killed in different orders in the remake uh, to the original and um aesthetically the kill scenes are just so much more different they come up with more I'll probably say slightly inventive ways to kill them in the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Of course, though, OG takes the cake. That gets it. I'm going to give that number. You know, I'm going to say that's better than the remake because it is. But they're both fantastic. So you're not seeing the 2003 remake of TCM. Take it. You know, take it out of your collection and watch it. Or pick it up if you've never picked it up. I don't know if the Blu-ray is hard to get or whatnot. Okay, last like few now. So we're going down to the wire a little bit. This is not a particularly numbered ranking, by the way. It's just 11 random fantastic horror movies with equally as awesome remakes. 1978, Halloween, John Carpenter's suspenseful thriller set on Halloween night featuring the killer Michael Myers, Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode, Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. Bonafide classic, absolutely awesome. Everyone knows this film or should, really. If you've not seen it, go watch it. You have the brutal... 2007 remake from um rob zombie notes they're both very good i love this one i love the remake i love this as well and they're just fan to both fantastic films i can live in a world with both i can have them both in my universe i'm quite happy with that however notable differences are in this remake we get an hour of michael's backstory why he's sort of delving into his psyche and why he became a killer and what pushed him over the edge then we go into a sort of gorier sort of rob zombie-esque rob zombie fied fingerprints rob zombie's fingerprints all over it um final hour remaking the original film in this film it just shows a little bit of michael's um childhood very quick like five minute pov killing and then we're on to um you know following the characters laurie strode and her friends and dr loomis and michael myers as he is an adult so there's quite some noticeable differences between them this one's a lot longer this is like 90 minutes this is like two hours so one's longer one sh original shorter this has more backstory this doesn't um and there's some noticeable differences in the film michael looks very good though in the remake as well um, i'm gonna go with the og really like the remake though you know it's a close one but the og is just both again like i say a bit a bona fide classic and you can't go wrong um okay we're on to the final tuna which is great because this has been a fairly long video i'm just gonna pick these up and i'm gonna go with the directorial debut of wes craven 1972 the last house on the left green ugh, greamy grimy rape revenge film um some brilliant acting in there it's got the um david hess starring david hess from um house on the edge of the park sleazebag david hess fantastic at playing a sleazy character you have him in this one a group of girls are murdered and tortured by some sadistic um convicts who have escaped jail they convicts end up staying at the murdered girl's house all unaware of what has gone on the parents discover through finding items in their in the um, convicts bags that they're obviously responsible for the death of their um, daughter and seek revenge same plot points for the remake from 2008 i think this might be a platinum dunes i'm not too sure is it um... no i don't think that one is a platinum dunes production but anyway in the era of glossy remakes you got last house on the left remade This isn't that tough for me. Um, before I go into some details, I'll just announce which one I'm going to pick out of the OG and the remake. Easily the OG. Aesthetically better. You've got David Hess. Although the remake does follow the same beats, but adds a lot too. So you've got more inventive kills probably in the remake. You know, you've got the microwave scene with um, Aaron Paul's character who plays um, Jesse in Breaking Bad. You've got him in here. He gets a nasty fate in a microwave. I think it's his character anyway bit more to this one like they try and add some plot points and whatnot and make it a little bit more violent than amped up but the original is just a bona fide classic you know and it had its trouble with release as well i think it was one of the banned ones but um yeah i'll go og on this one last house on the left and finally 
in this sort of OG versus remake video, I picked out an absolute classic, George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Have spoken about this one a little bit lately from 1968. And going up against it's let me just get the date, guys, because I want to get the right date if I can find it. I don't think it has the date on this one, unfortunately. Um, it's either 1990 or 1991. I'll say 1990's Night of the Living Dead. This is the Umbrella Entertainment Edition. There's the original. Um, notable differences. The original is in black and white, although having a coloured version out there. But it's one of those kind of transfers from black and white to colour, which look pretty awful from what I've seen on um, screenshots. And then, of course, we have the colour 1990 version. This one's directed by George A. Romero. This one's directed by Tom Sav special effects makeup artist Tom Savini, who also did effects for George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead film. And he's got awesome effects in Day of the Dead. You know, his fingerprints are all over the effects um, areas of the Day of the Dead. Um, they're both fantastic. They follow the same beats, you know, following Barbara. But notable, another notable difference is Barbara's quite a weak character in this one who relies on Ben to sort of lead the group and pull her through. In this, Barbara has shorter hair and she's a bit more of a tomboy sort of kick-ass like female. So Barbara's actually quite handy in the remake and she will actually, you know, like carve some zombies up. This one, she's a bit fem more feminine. This one, she's less feminine and a bit more ready for action. Um, so there's some noticeable um, differences. Um, I'd say the special effects, as good as they are in Night of the Living Dead, with it being a classic and a proto-zombie film. A little bit better in the remake, you know, they've got Tom Savini doing it. He's obviously um, directing, they've got his fingerprints all over it. He does a great job. Um, yeah, Tom Savini's not got many films he's directed. I don't know if this is the only one. He may have a few more, but anyway, he's starred in a few films, that's for sure. And also done special effects for many. But his um, directing is very good in this. I think the remake's fantastic. Follows the same beats. It's just you've got a more like sort of stronger um, iteration of um, Barbara. You've got um, gory zombie action. It's in colour. It's shot in colour. Um, they're both absolutely amazing. Um, you know what? I'm going to go remake. So I think the Night of the Living Dead remake, although not having the kind of like... Um, presence in the horror genre historically as um, Night of the Living Dead 1968 and not as an not as much as of an um, influential film I just think this is a great remake and it's done better and it's even produced by the director George A. Romero who did the original it's, he, he's even a producer on here so George A. Romero worked on this movie I think he might have even been co-written co by him so you've got Romero's fingerprints all over it as well as Tom Savini in the directing chair it's just a great update. Night of the Living Dead, the um, remake, fan absolutely awesome, fantastic. There's my um, OGs versus remakes. Anyway, tell me what you think. Um, what's your favourite remake or your favourite um, original that has a remake? It'd be cool to know. Like I said, new stuff coming to the channel. Got some different video ideas and things and how I'm going to um, put them out. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.